Good morning, folks. Uh, I'm Sanjay Dalal, the founder and CEO of Ogoing. It's, uh, it's a beautiful day here in Orange County. And from where you're joining, uh, please share where you're joining from in the chat area. Go ahead and, and let us know where, what city you are coming in from. Uh, I really appreciate everybody calling in and, and zooming in, as they say now. Uh, see Las Vegas on the map. That's great. Uh, Ashok, where are you calling in from or zooming in? Uh, Alex is from Irvine. I'm in Irvine as well. Orange County. Alex, how are you doing? Irving, I think he's, he's in London somewhere. It appears that way from the background. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> San Clemente, London. How about that? <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you today at our business roundtable and fireside chat. We have a great topic. Uh, our topic of the day is business valuation and exit planning. And I have uh, with me uh, someone uh, that I've known since I moved to Irvine uh, back in 2007. Uh, we used to share uh, the same offices, uh, uh, you know, when we were, you know, still small businesses and, and we are still small businesses. So we love doing that. Uh, on DuPont Drive in Irvine, and he's none other than a good friend of mine, as well as uh, an entrepreneur, uh, an author, uh, and, uh, you know, most importantly, a business coach, uh, Irving Katz. Irving, how are you doing? I'm doing incredible. It's, uh, I'm blessed to be in a business where I, I kind of like the norm is always changing. So it's very exciting as you all... Being, having the entrepreneurial spirit, there's one thing we always learn about, and that's flexibility. <laughs> it's like they said, blessed be the flexible because they will bend but not break. So that's us. So it's adapt and change, even though I'm, I'm a little bit older than a lot of people. Uh, I still have that ability. So I've always believed in that. So it's, uh, it's just an exciting time. It's a different time. You know, they say this too shall pass. Things will change and things will get better. So, you know, you, my strategic plan two years ago is different than it is today. So it's uh, it's really a good thing. I'd like to know about everybody else on the call, Sanjay. And Absolutely. Okay. So actually, let's do that. So I'm going to uh, we'll, we'll do a quick roundtable around. And, you know, since we have a small audience, you know, feel free to uh, to talk about you and your business, uh, talk about what's going on, and and importantly, maybe share what are your needs. You know, uh, as we talk, you know, as we look into 2021, you know, what what is it? What is your topmost? Uh, you know, uh, I would say pressing need as of today. Uh, so we will start with Ashok here. Ashok has been, uh, you know, someone who I've known also for many years now. And uh, Ashok, go ahead, please. Go and unmute yourself before you talk, yeah. Good morning. My name is Ashok. I'm from Anaheim, California. My company's name, Stone Products Unlimited. We are in a flooring business and we sell throughout the USA. We are an importer, distributor for the last uh, 30 years plus in Anaheim, California. Uh, luckily and uh, Pandemic situations uh, change everybody's lifestyle, the way we work, the way we do the business, the way we interact. I'm not going to go into details about everything, but we had probably one of the best year 2020 <laughs> in the last 30 years. Wow. And uh, it's a family-owned company now. Myself, I started and my son joined who is also a graduate from Cal State Fullerton and USC for the MBA program and trying to take the company to the different level. And we have all his high school friends, college friends, fraternity brothers and sister working for us, all the young people, total of 20 people work in the company. So, you know, we are in a flooring business. That means everything. And it's a huge business, it's a huge market. And what's changing in our industry is also, is a, and I don't know much about it, uh, a lot of investors, the private investors, so VC people, that's the name I know. And that's, that's the only thing I know. 
uh, are coming in and buying out a lot of companies, you know. And uh, it's interesting enough that we we also like to explore. And as Daniel said, he's probably one of the most senior one. And I don't know, maybe I'm in a competition, but I just got my coronavirus vaccination yeah. and, I'm, I, and I'm 70 years old or 70 years young man, you know? There you go. Uh, anybody, anybody ask me my age, I always say is I'm 30 years old because that's the 30 years left, you know, before I have, I'm disappear. So <laughs> I count that I'm going to live 100 years. So Likewise. next year, next year I'm gonna be 29 years old, and that's the way I work. That's the way I behave. That's the way I enjoy my life, and I work. That's, so, a, that's a great spirit, uh, Ashok. Thanks for joining in. Let's let's. Uh, what's your pressing need for this year? Quickly. Uh, it it will be the same to evaluate my company, how much it is worth. We are profitable, okay. and looking for a potential buyer or okay. company to join the company so we can grow you know to the next level which could be we're looking at uh, doubling the business every year fantastic that's, that's a great way to look at it absolutely and i'm sure we'll have some uh, insights today for you with coach erving uh, let's let's go to daniel daniel how are you doing go ahead and introduce yourself on unmute, unmute your mic and and share a few things please Hi, my name is Daniel. Um, I'm living here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm actually an Orange County native, um, you know, but with, with the pandemic, I uh, decided to move to Nevada. Um, I was uh, born, in, born in Kenya, moved to this country when I was five years old. Actually, my grandfather taught at Cal State Fullerton. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's been, it's been a wonderful life here in the States. Um, when I was about 17, I decided to take an extra pair of shoelaces and make bracelets from them. And, you know, that began my company. My company is called Rasta Clock. And um, we basically just make accessories and we're one category, which is bracelets. And, you know, through a lot of hard work and brand building, we're able to expand our business into over 200 countries um, and really distribute <clears throat> everywhere in the world through e-commerce, brick and mortar, um, we have a staff of about 30 people um, in Orange in Long, Long Beach, California. And um, yeah, 2020 was a challenging year, um, just, you know, in the fact that we weren't an essential good um, and apparel and that category took a shift. People were buying more cozy clothing, sitting in, the, in their houses and at leisure, getting exercise um, and less accessories and things of that nature. So it was a challenging year, um, not only from a business perspective, but also social uh, perspective and balancing the two and leadership there. But um, we, had a, we had a great year in a, in a sense of um, build, building our culture and staying healthy as a business. Um, but some realizations of, you know, making sure that we expand our product line, um, you know, as we look to rebuild our workforce uh, from some layoffs we had to do in 2020, really making sure that we're training. Um, and as, as we look to in the future, you know, for myself to take uh, a little bit of a different role from a CEO and a founder and, and bring more professionals that have the experience, you know, making sure that I'm, I'm not the smartest person in the room. I certainly don't think I am right now, but even making that even more of a priority um, and training our leaders and, and managers. And so those are two things that I'm looking for, you know, ways to um, build a healthier business that if someone came and looked at it, they, they know that it's autonomous um, and that it has a future growth uh, set in. And so I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to learn from all of you. And, and thanks for having me. Well, that's great. And, and Daniel, feel free to add your website uh, links, et cetera, in the chat so we can all uh, review it later. But uh, it's really it's amazing what you're doing. And, and yeah, if you want to show your products a little later or anytime during the roundtable, feel free to do that. I'm, I'm kind of curious how they are. And and how they look, you know. So you you, you picked my curiosity already. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. I'll put the websites on the chat. And then we'll, we'll okay, that's them. great. Let's let's go over to Alex. Alex, how are you doing? Alex, go ahead and mute yourself. Thank you. Let's see. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the microphone sounds good. Well, it's good seeing you again, Sanjay. I've seen you at a couple of the Thai events. Uh, I, I get your outgoing uh, newsletter. I think it's uh, fascinating. I'd like to talk to you more about it. So I've been in the uh, entrepreneurial community for quite a while. I've had my own software company. I had a, a health and wellness uh, brokerage company. 
And uh, right now, actually, just through connections here, I've gotten introduced into like the, the infinite banking concept and, and more or less also uh, helping uh, with the, uh, the legacy planning of uh, small businesses as they transfer that business to the next generation and going forward. You know, a lot of businesses, only about like 70% of them or so make it to the, the second generation and it only goes down to like 30% that make it to the, the third generation. And uh, these are all like bankable businesses and, you know, like what you guys have here in Daniel and, and Ashok. So um, what, uh, my, uh, what I would like to do is actually help uh, uh, promote the, the infinite banking uh, concept and uh, work with uh, kind of a network of CPAs yeah. and get them trained up. And I'd like to work with you a little bit on that and pick your brain, Sanjay, and see where we can work together, particularly Absolutely. people that have management and consulting expertise. I work for like the big four consulting companies. So right out of college, I joined Anderson Consulting which then split off from Arthur Anderson and became Accenture. We got lucky. We uh, dodged a bullet there. So uh, a lot of these uh, people with that mindset have kind of a, a framework and methodology type um, uh, understanding. So that way, when you engage and start training CPAs that, you know, they kind of understand, you know, what, uh, you know, what are the parameters, you know, what type of clients that you want to work with you know, what makes sense and go on. And then there's also a lot of uh, some college professors that actually go into more of the psychology of uh, uh, family planning and what have you. So uh, they even have, a, a, one of them is from Columbia and he has a lot of success working for families up to even several hundred million dollars where uh, he shows how some families have been able to keep a business uh, operating for a thousand years. And uh, a lot of it has to do with more spiritual capital, emotional capital, relationship capital, rather than just finance and what have you. So, ooh, ooh, so ooh. That, that's, that's where I want to do. So I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to you a little bit, Sanjay, and then um, if you can put your link on there and, you know, maybe we can brainstorm, but my main focus is to, to get together with some CPAs and kind of work with them on that. So this will help them out a lot as far as being able to expand their market and differentiate themselves as well. So. Absolutely. No, it's great to see you again, Alex, and thank you for yeah. joining today. And uh, and I'm sure we'll find ways to collaborate. I'm there are quite a few, uh, you know, folks here who, who are I'm sure more than willing to to learn more from you as well as find ways to collaborate with you. So so let's keep that going. Uh, Gil, Gil, go ahead, Gil. You're next. Uh, Gil, can you unmute your mic and share? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you doing, Sanjay? Nice to see you again. Good to see you again, yes. Yeah. Good. Hey, uh, well, um, I run a small business. I sell water purifiers. It's uh, pretty much only myself. I've uh, been doing it for almost 10 years now. And uh, as, a, as a side business, because I, I'm in the mortgage industry, I work for a mortgage lender. I've been working for a mortgage lender for about 15 uh, years and um, well for for any reasons I got into the water business and I decided to do it on my own and, and, and as a side job um, this year this past year is actually I, 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 I can't complain it's, it's not it hasn't been bad for me uh, it, both in mortgage especially mortgage is, is a boom right now uh, and, and the water business is, it didn't go down. Um, it didn't go up a lot also, but uh, I mean, it was steady and, and, and I've been having a, a lot of business. Uh, I can complain, like I said, uh, fortunately. Uh, but um, there are some changes in my mortgage uh, business. I have a, a promotion and, and uh, it's taking all of my time. That's why I, I, I asked you, uh, Sanjay, if I... There's a chance because I want to, uh, I don't know if sell the business or transfer it or, or, yes. or the, the water business, I mean, right? Yeah. And I have uh, over 100 customers um, that I, I, I uh, uh, service oh. every year. Um, yeah. And I, 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 have, I really have no idea how to value my business and how to put it in a market and sell it. Yeah. So I was wondering if it maybe uh, you or, or, or your um, yeah. friends can, can have any idea how to do this. I'm sure we can. So I, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure Arving is making some notes. Gil, go ahead and put your contact in the chat and I'm going to make sure Arving and you connect, you know, right after our Zoom meeting for sure. Sure. Thank you.
uh thanks for joining good, good to hear your voice uh, we didn't see your video so if you oh yeah i'm sorry because I, 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 I use in my uh, mortgage company's uh, laptop and, and fine. totally I, fine i, I, keep it. I don't <laughs> know if they I, have I, access I, to I, it or I, not so i want to i want to keep it uh, you know no no, in, no problem. i haven't taken a shower I, I also see, so. i do see you uh, <laughs> on facebook from time to time so no worries there go <laughs> thank you man go ahead subash subash mandonga subash go ahead please Subhash, go and unmute your mic and share your uh, share your visit. Yeah. So, hi. So, I, um, you know, unlike the others, well-established and accomplished folks, uh, I'm, I'm working on a startup. Um, okay. Startup essentially is uh, uh, representing a company, an American company that uh, has developed a, a unique uh, micro wind turbine uh, that's filling up a a very unique space, uh, and uh, you know, we we presented to the state of California before the lockdown, and yeah. they made us uh, energy energy um, developers. But more important that we we got uh, projects that are in Africa and Middle East and Asia. Uh, yeah. There seems to be a big demand for that. So, so the reason I'm here is uh, uh, th there is a major uh, energy company that wants to form a JV with us, <laughs> and uh, you know, this what comes out of here would be very invaluable to me. Well, absolutely. That that seems like a big move. Uh, you know, the the energy companies. So, I'm sure with uh, with Arving here and, and even Alex and and Daniel and Ashok. I mean, a lot of folks have done a lot of business development work. You know, at many levels. So, I think you're in the right place, and uh, I'm sure we'll all connect. So, please please do put your contact in the chat. Subhash, sure. and, uh, and we will make sure, uh, you know, uh, at least we, we point you in the right direction. How about that? <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. Thanks for joining. Yeah. So, Paras, Paras, go ahead, Paras. Paras Nanamati. Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Paras. Yeah. Hey, Sanjay. Nice to see you again. I know we always connect at the Thai meetings. Um, so I keep getting your emails on ongoing, and um, I decided to kind of jump in and participate this one time. Uh, it's easier to kind of participate virtually than to drive all the way down to Irvine from Los Angeles. So, <laughs> you, you've uh, done that a few times, but uh, kudos to you. And uh, I think this is a lot faster as some of us already expressed earlier in a way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hi guys, my name is Paras Nanawari. I'm a trained architect. I have my own consulting practice up in Los Angeles. Um, this past year has been a little bit of a roller coaster ride for us. So we were, um, focusing a lot on multifamily and kind of like retail and uh, our retail design business just fell off the tree. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody's doing commercial uh, retail at all. So trying to kind of pivot a little bit and see if you can kind of get into a little bit more residential and expand our residential services. And uh, at this point, kind of focusing a lot on uh, accessory dwelling units, you may have heard of something called an ADU. Um, so trying to see if uh, you may know anybody who is either in need of a home renovation or designing new homes. Sure. Um, we do do a lot of kind of like uh, institutional work like KV homes and stuff, but uh, we also do private home expansions and ADUs. Sure. So just focusing on seeing if we can get a, either some referrals or some kind of outreach that uh, helps bolster that part of our business. Absolutely. A lot, lot of connections here in the local community in Irvine and Orange County. So would be happy to to share the word for us for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining. And uh, we have the last one, but the not list is Natasha and uh, and the team at uh, Pop White. How are, you, how are you guys doing? Natasha or is it Hark who is logged in from Pop White? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, I guess they, they are, they're just in a listen only mode. Okay, that's fine. No worries, Natasha. That's, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to send them via chat, uh, you know, and uh, we'll be happy to respond to you. So let me just share a couple of quick slides and then we will get into what we are here for, you know, is, is talk to Coach Irving uh, and hear his, uh, you know, uh, views on, on what's happening. Uh, Let's just forget the slides. I think what I want to do is, is jump into the meat of uh, the talk today. 
Uh, I wanted to share a quick quote, uh, and I'll just talk it, talk it out uh, as opposed to sharing directly. And this is by Tim Cook, you know, he's uh, the, the CEO of Apple. Uh, he joined uh, Apple a long time back, and uh, uh, he was appointed the CEO by none other than Steve Jobs before Jobs passed away. And it'll be 11, I mean, 10 years this year, actually, uh, since his passing and, and uh, Tim Cook's, you know, if you may, leadership at Apple. And he said this, you can only do so many things great and you should cast aside everything else. And I think uh, that's really an important quote for a lot of us entrepreneurs who are in it for the long term. Uh, you can only do so many things great, great and you should cast aside everything else. Uh, that's by Tim Cook. And I think uh, uh, it's been a challenging year for sure for a lot of us, you know, in businesses, small businesses, especially uh, I know some of the tech companies and, and some of the home improvement companies have done extremely well. Kudos to them, <laughs> no, you know, and the, but, uh, you know, even some e-commerce players as well, depending on what category you are in. Uh, but for many mainstream small businesses, it's been a very long struggle. But hopefully things will change. I think we are here to see what are the positives that we can take and what are some new opportunities, you know, we can create, you know, in this year and beyond. So what I want to do is start off uh, by asking a few questions to Coach Ar you know, Irving here. And feel free to jump in. It's a round table. You know, it's an open format. So I would love for you to, uh, to also have your own questions ready for Irving here. So Irving, let's start off with you. I mean, how long have you been an entrepreneur? I, I know you, you started your journey somewhere on the East Coast, if I should mention that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and somewhere along the way, you decided, let's just hop on uh, uh, a plane or a bus and then move on here but give us a sense of your journey please as an entrepreneur well it's i probably started about 11 years old i was a newspaper boy <laughs> and i had to do accounting and in in those days i guess newspapers aren't really that popular anymore i used to be uh on the block where i live in san clemente the guy would throw newspapers out and now i don't even see the guy anymore <laughs> i guess everybody that's kind of a uh uh, a, a business that's gone the way of the dodo bird. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it could, it's called, I guess it's the, the term was creative destruction. And that happens to many industries and many businesses. And if we uh, don't keep changing, we, we become dinosaurs as well. So I was a newspaper boy and I ran that business my first business in a bicycle in, in New York during the cold winter. I hated that job, but you know, I, I, I like making money. I always enjoyed that. And then I was a musician and I had several bands. We did road tours. I was a booking agent. I go down a Tin Pan Alley. It was called in New York City. Oh, wow. Yep. So what I was it? Were you were you like a band player or were you singing or what? I, I was both. I, I used to work in uh, every summer was wonderful being in high school uh, during the summertime. We go to the they call it the Catskill Mountains north of New York City. And there were so many Jewish people that they, they would call it fondly the Jewish Alps. And you go there, you'd enjoy yourself. You'd have a great, great summer and make some money. And since we worked uh we worked at night and the waiters worked during the day. We had a choice of the girls during the day. So it was just a, <laughs> and, and I decided that, you know, we, we couldn't get jobs. So I, I would create jobs and I would call on our hotels and um, places they call bungalow colonies where people would go during the summertime. And so I, I would book all the bands. Wow. And then I had a restaurant business. I actually had a Chinese restaurant in New York City for a while. And I had a mail order business, precursor of Amazon, but no is near the success of an Amazon. And then I went to graduate school and actually wrote a book called Family Business Secrets, all about transitioning in family businesses. Absolutely. So I had an insurance agency, which was another business I had, a financial advisory firm, and now my my real love, and this is what I, I've been doing really for a very long time, is, is business coaching and working with business owners. So I never will give up the entrepreneurial spirit until, until I, you know, until the Lord takes me away to, to a better place or a different place, I'm going to be, keep doing it. 
and uh, I have I have clients all around the country, so it's it's really been great. So I don't have to drive. Uh, I could, and I have several different programs. I have addition. I have uh, two master's degrees, and several certifications in exit planning uh, from sure. uh, di- different organizations. So it's uh, it's been a great journey, and I I love being an entrepreneur. And you know, I've I've seen her Irving occasionally you know hang out at uc irvine as, as a guest uh, lecturer yeah. on different topics to do with marketing and management are we how long uh, you still active there or is it from time to time yeah i i i, I do that um and i i'm always studying something i just actually got another certification recently which is probably uh this organization has been around for quite a while it's uh it's uh it's exit planning and um it's uh, really, it was a rigorous class I had to take to do it. So yeah. um, I, I, my old boss always said to me, he says, you know, when you green, you grow, when you're ripe, you rot. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I always want to grow and I always want to keep going. And the other thing is you can only coast one way, which is downhill. So it's almost like the, there's so many expressions, you know, if it's, if it's not broke, you know, break it is, is one actually, um, so th- it's just very, very exciting and fun. There, there, there are so many good tools that we can use. And what I like the most about what I do, it's a team approach. So I don't do this by myself. I don't do this in a vacuum. I have a team of people that are really good. I have great attorneys I work with. You have to have great attorneys. I have uh, people that do valuations, modest ones and really professional ones are some go up to fifty thousand dollars if you want something certified you need great accountants to work with uh because there's the difference between a stock sale and an asset sale and it's just uh i i keep asking and i keep finding so and then some people like to work locally so like i have a i have clients in oklahoma so i have uh i have accountants there and i have attorneys there that i've met with um and I guess the only thing I really miss is I really do love traveling and, and I, I had to cancel a cruise this year and I, I love to go out to Oklahoma and other places. And then I we work out of a country club and bring the business owners in and teach them, you know, it's, it's about education. Uh, so what what got, got you Irving into business valuation? It's a very interesting topic. Uh, I would say it's not something that people would just say, let's, let's go and do that one day. Why business valuation and is that even a yeah. Bus- business about? valuation is always one question I'm always asked. Yeah. And and if they don't, if the client doesn't ask it, I ask them. I said, well, you know, it's like a triangulation, I call it. I said, the question is this, for you to leave your business, what would it take in terms of money? Mm-hmm. But that I mean, you know, with smaller businesses, it's... Uh, uh, can you really, re- what age would you like to retire at? Some of us are like Ashok and me and some other people are, <clears throat> we're going to be doing this forever because we really love it. <laughs> yeah. But there are other people that say, you know what, 65, that's more than enough. I'm not going a nickel, a penny. I'm not going a day longer than that. Um, other people say, well, the standard answer for most entrepreneurs is how long you're going to be doing this for. And they say, well, at least five years. At the age of 60, five years. At the age of 65, oh, five more years. At the age of 70, (laughs) five more years. And unless they really take the steps uh, to to create an enterprise as opposed to a small business, it's always going to be five years. Mm -hmm. So the valuation comes in where, well, you know, how much, if you're going to leave it and never come back at 65 or 70, whatever it is, how much money are you going to need? So, well, how do you figure that out as a financial advisor, financial planner? Well, you take your personal assets and you look at the personal assets and say, well, what is your income now? What can you, what can, so, you know, if you want two, three, four hundred, whatever it is a year, and you have two, three, four million dollars, is that going to be enough? For most people, it probably won't be. So, where's the difference of money going to come from? Well, if you're going to leave your business and never come back again, then you need a valuation. And I say, well, why did it start with a valuation? 
Well, if you were going to New York, what's the first question you have to ask somebody? If they, you know, how do I get to New York? What's the first question you ask them? Where are you now? <laughs> Unless you know where you are now, you're never going to get to where you want to go. And for a business owner, that's the first step. So it's a simple valuation will tell the business owner where, where they are right now. And uh, we could do, I, I have some that, that I do for people that are very, very modest in, in price, but just gives them a little bit of an idea. And today we can talk about something that can apply to everybody, but the valuation, why that's so important is that you have to have a benchmark. And then from there, we could figure out where you want to go and where you want to grow. Uh, so I think that's, that's the big thing. So you have to have the valuation. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, uh, so, I mean, obviously nobody wants to sell their business for less. I haven't found an entrepreneur who says, you know, just, just give me a low ball offer. <laughs> Here I go. So what is it that the owner should then be thinking of? And you, you talked about, five more years concept, which I think it, it rings a bell. I've seen that and I could see myself keep on doing it if I don't uh, set some guidelines as to where I want to be as well, right? So so the question is, what do you do as an owner to increase your valuation within a set given time? And and how, how do you actually make that happen? And, and importantly, then and, and after you do that, then what? Okay, well, that, that that's really a good question. So there are certain things we call in a business that value drivers. There are items that change the trajectory of your business. And Asha, from what he said, I mean, he's already gone from just being an entrepreneur and having a business to having an enterprise. Because once a business owner moves past the point where it's just all about them, it becomes a Daniel too. It, 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 it moves to a different level. It's an enterprise and an enterprise is worth far more than in an individual business that's relying upon just you. So that's certainly part of it. There are factors you look at the sales makeup, you look up the makeup of the clients and the clients, you don't want to have too much customer concentration. Uh, by that, I mean, you know, you may have one customer that's 40% of your business or 20%. So you want to have, you don't want to, do that and you don't want to have that and don't forget if somebody's buying a business and there's four different ways you can exit a business at least maybe five but somebody's going to write a check no matter what that check is they're not right even though it's written to you hopefully they're not buying you because when the, the person strokes the check they're buying the team they're buying the management team and a lot of times uh, the management team is not pro protected. And it, it's a critical issue because <laughs> when they get wind of the fact that you're leaving, what are they gonna do? Your key people, they're oh. gonna be nervous. They're gonna think they're gonna lose their jobs. They're gonna be running for the door. So how do you incentivize those people? If you're, if you have, certainly if you're a publicly traded company, you have stock, you can, you can offer them. But if you're a small business, a family business, uh, and you're not in a situation where you're issuing stock, what do you have to do to incentivize those people to stay? Uh, because that's really important. So there are lots and lots of factors. In addition to that is, you look at, is, is the business scalable? So, so a buyer is going to be looking at all these different things. They're going to be taking your books apart. Mm -hmm. They're going to be looking at everything, looking at your financials, seeing how they relate. And part of figuring out what to do next is the valuation because without the valuation, you will look at there's algorithms and industries and what's the difference between a business that's going to sell for, you know, five or 10 million or one that's going to, you know, barely you can get $1 million out of it. It's the, it's the team, it's the processes and it's, it's the intellectual property. The other thing people look at when they're buying a business is tell, how about, how about the protections? How are you protecting your IP? Sure. Uh, do you have processes in place? Uh, th there's just so many factors and that's why normally 
most of the engagements I have are over a period of several years because, uh, you know, the old expression, Rome wasn't built, built in a day, but it can be destroyed in a day. <clears throat> so how do you, <laughs> how do you structure things? Uh, wh what do you look at? What do you do? When do you do it? Uh, there's a lot of questions, but there's, there's, there's so many good tools out there and so many good people to work with because you can think you're selling it for the highest price and you may not be at all oh. because there's, there's different kinds of buyers and this is not a game for amateurs. Why? Because the buyers are professionals. That's all they do. If they're rolling up businesses, the, um, if you haven't sold a business before and it's the first time you need a team, you need to be protected. <clears throat> and that can only come by having a team of professionals. So. I see. I see. Yeah. So, so on that valuation, uh, the growth of valuation, I mean, I'm seeing at least in the last year or two, uh, you know, there's internet businesses, you know, like e-commerce, you know, cloud security, uh, you know, it used to be called software as a service, but, you know, models like that, where you have subscription models and where folks are, you know, able to sign up quickly, easily. I mean, they're getting some crazy ass valuations. I mean, what's, what's happening in the industry? Is that, is that by design, are we seeing another dot-com bubble happening, which is, I call it the cloud bubble now, or, or is this for real? I tell you, if we were looking at 20 years ago, but you all remember to the dot com, what was the big pro the biggest problem the dot coms had? You guys remember? They, they never made it. They, they were not making money. Exactly. Yeah. Companies today are different. I mean, look at the the report on Apple came out today: a hundred billion dollars in a quarter. Hundred and eleven billion. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> I was I was telling that to my son and he's like, what that? I said, yeah, in one quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so those businesses, they figured out how to scale them. They figured out how to get a subscription model. Yeah. And that's that's what the people are buying. They're they're buying your list, but they're also buying the processes and protections because if you don't have a they call it having a moat around your business from the feudal days of castles and what would they do? They dig a big hole and they yeah. fill it with crocodiles and <laughs> that's how they protected themselves. So Apple has a pretty, pretty good moat, even though other people can do it. They've got a lot of proprietary things. Yeah. Um, the Googles, the, the big companies, and they've done things just a little better. And yeah. just when you think all the ideas are gone, it's not true. I heard another one just today on the radio. It's it's a takeoff on you know what's the company it's it, on books and learning, uh, the company on books and learning. Uh, yeah, are you doing the one that LinkedIn acquired Link, Linda or the other one? Uh, no, there was one. There's one big one that's always you know you you get a, a subscription of books online. Oh yeah 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 I know which you're talking about. Okay, yeah. so this one I thought was brilliant. Yeah. What what they what the company does is. They have nonfiction and they have like 28 different categories of nonfiction, including businesses and all of that. Yeah. And what they've done is compile that book like good to great or any of the classical books where you could listen for 15 minutes and it's like you read the whole book. Oh, wow. Is that I an exciting, that. I, I mean, I heard that thing. I said, Oh my God, that is so fantastic. Kind what a brilliant the idea. The message with some key insight. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to listen for like, you know, four, four hours to a freaking book. I mean, you know, if I'm driving, <laughs> particularly when you're sitting at home, you know, you're driving. All right. You're a captive audience. But sure. so all the good ideas haven't been taken. You know, there's, oh, there's plenty of room, plenty of room to go and plenty of room to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Any members of the audience, if you have a pressing question, go ahead and and ask Irving anytime. Yeah, I, I got a quick question. So, you Go know, you, you guys talk big things. I think we are all here, small business people. Mm -hmm. And we like we like to be street smart, not academic smart, like what sure. you guys are into. Sure. Billions. Uh, I don't know how many zeros are there even. <laughs> it makes so, two of us. I don't have and, any of those clients. So the rule of thumb, and Sanjay said it very well, 
is that uh, even in my flooring business, people paying an obscene money, you know, and all these VC people, they come up with a portfolio. They want to invest $500 million into the industry, yeah. you know, buying out different groups. And uh, they, they're offering obscene money and it's not even worth, you know, academic wise, business wise, accounting wise. I don't know what they see as a potential, you know, uh, to offer that kind of a money. And I'm using as an example, standard example, yeah. easy for everybody to understand. Uh, I hope uh, like a $5 million in a gross sales and average is a 30% gross profit, sure. you know, and anywhere from five to 10% is a net, net, net profit, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, my take on a rule of thumb. True. Uh, how much that business could be worth you know, I mean, considering everything is good, the credit is good, diversified customer base, you know, there is no focus on only one customer, 40% of the business, everything is quite diversified. Uh, yeah. is, is the business, some people say business is worth uh, 5 million in sales with a good potential, business is worth $5 million. Some people say you make 10% net, you know, $500,000 times 10, so it's a $5 million. I'm just coming back to the same answer, $5 million. What is the formula? What they see in that kind of a business? Maybe to me, $5 million is a lot of money. I would sell it right now. I know it will be worth maybe $7 million. I don't care because uh, I can double that $5 million in the next six years, you know, just putting money into investment. That's a great. That's a great question for Arun. I think it probably depends on a few variables, as you said earlier, especially the industry you are in and and the potential for growth. But go ahead, Arun. It it depends. It depends on a lot of different variables. Yeah. It really because they're gonna for that kind of money. They're gonna. It sounds simple and easy, but they're gonna turn over every rock. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna examine your books going back years. They're gonna find out what kind of leverage you have if you have leverage in your company. They're going to find out um, what your accounting practices they're going to look at and, and they're going to see what you've done. And they may, you may get a, an outstanding offer, but then you look behind what that offer really means. You may, there may be an earn out on the back end. It may not be all be cash. It may be um, where you get a certain amount in cash, maybe 50%, maybe more or less, and then the rest you're going to have to earn. And then, you know, there are, there are people that wind up buying their business back. I, I, I've, I've had people that where it's happened to them, where somebody else bought the business, they didn't get all their money, they rented it into the ground. So there's just an awful lot of factors. The, uh, the simple valuation that I do looks at a, oh God, it's about 20 different uh, uh, ways of looking at the financials. Uh, in addition to that, it, it has algorithms built into it. And again, this the, it's the first step. Uh, there's actually four different ways that, or five different ways you can exit a business. And the way you're gonna get the best price for any business is if you have a, uh, a, a third party sale. But, but the, the most powerful one, so if you could go to a business broker and basically they'll find the buyer, but you're not gonna get the best price that way. Uh, you, the way you're going to get the best price is by creating an auction. And that may be an M&A kind of a situation. So uh, there's, there's plenty of money out there. But then the other decision is, do you want to sell it to a third party or you want the business to keep going? Because, you know, for whatever reasons, community reason, Ashok, you have uh, these kids working there. You have your family working there. What's that worth? It's an emotional decision. It's a psychological decision. Maybe there's a way you can have, have your bread and butter and have everything for, for yourself. So there's a lot of things that go into that. And that's why it, it does take time. So it's not always what it appears to be. You peel back the onion and you begin to see other things. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight. Yeah, but I think to his... No. Uh, the core, the the core question 
is still not answered. I and I hear you what you're saying, but yes, I mean uh, all the employees are like families, and nothing happens. You know the way the businesses are bought, at least in my industry, is that uh, they want to keep all the employees, majority employees. They want to keep me to mm -hmm. run the business for next three years or five years. I mean that's a standard procedure, but we need to get into nuts and bolts to see what it is, you know, I mean, uh, and I'm not saying that for people like me, I mean, I can just walk away and let my employees take over the business free. I mean, saying they can give me so much money a year and I'm done, you know? So, yeah. So I think this requires, uh, there is, I guess the reason Arvind didn't give you a quick answer, Ashok is because he has to look at everything. Just, okay. I mean, that's, I, I think he, uh, he would be kidding if he just pulls a number out of the hat and says, here is the valuation. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, no. the, good, the good news is you have uh, an outstanding business which is doing well. I think uh, that's what I could figure. And I, mean, I think obviously this is going to take uh, an effort on Irving's part. No. Uh, to help I, I, I hear you. I'm, I'm not here yeah. as a free advice or pick his brain. Uh, we're just talking about general yeah. Industry yeah. standard. That's what we're talking about. Not not yeah. my business. And I didn't give you the facts and figure no, on I my know. business. I know. And, so, and you know, the, the fact is, Ashok, it changes. I mean, one business may be hot today. Things change. Another business, you know, the printing industry. I mean, that was an incredible business at one time. And, and, and now it's just not that kind of business anymore. So I think, you know, what you're saying in your industry, people, there's there's money chasing businesses. That's an exciting place to be. Yeah, and that's true. That is very true. You want to be somewhere where VCs are are pushing heavily in terms of funding and and. But but you are you are you are not a part of the VC or you are not no. a group of the VC. You are just a person who can evaluate the businesses. Am I no, right? I am a person that can evaluate. And with the team I have, figure okay. out where we're going to go with it. And and it may be a business broker. It may be an inside. It may be even something called an ESOP, ESOP. Uh, and that's a way of really cashing out big time and keeping the people working there. And it's some of the biggest companies in the country are ESOPs. Yeah. I think one of the first one, I think, was Avis or Hertz. Avis, but yeah. there's, there's lots of them. It's... Uh, it's a way of really cashing out, uh, very tax efficient, but not for everybody because it's it's expensive. So that's another way of doing it. Yeah, so, I, so, I, mean, I have a quick comment too. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Alex. So, so on that on that same topic, uh, Ashok, there's actually a lot of ESOPs that are uh, uh, popping up in Europe, like in Spain and Italy, that that are good models for that. And then lastly, like. Uh, from the experience I had, that uh, some of these longer, uh, uh, some of these longer term businesses that go from generation to generation, usually they just put together a trust, and then the family members have a, a, a seat, a, a seat on the board of the trust, and then they have some responsibility for that. And if they don't, you know, then they just get a buyout. So there's there's a whole little structure that they have with that, as far as if the person has a desire to maintain that that business from generation to generation so that's another option as well so they usually those are larger businesses but you know it's still an option so thank you it's a good point i think you saw a, a very yeah. good instrument uh, but for the right uh, right mm -hmm. companies for sure yeah so Irving, business valuation is one point which is important you know for a business as they are considering uh, you know, a potential exit. It's, this is one of the steps. But what is what else is there, right? I mean, you, you talked about there are many ways to exit a business. I mean, are there bad ways to exit a business? What are some of the better and the worst ways, if you may? <laughs> okay, well, the worst way is called liquidation. <laughs> okay, fair enough. If you don't want to go nobody, there. <laughs> nobody wants to go there. That is like the worst of the worst. Right. But I, I, I think really most businesses... I never sold, frankly. Uh, there's probably 75 or 80 percent of them never get sold, maybe more. They don't um, get sold. So what they do not get them? sold, right? What happened to them? They keep running. Well, or? they they can if if they're planned right. I'm working on uh, two businesses now that um, uh, have in, that's called an inside transaction. One is a okay. one is an inside 
uh, two key employees. Um, we just successfully included a uh, an, yeah. an air conditioning company uh, where the uh, two people wanted to buy the business were uh, one was a production guy and the other was a sales guy. And uh, uh, over probably seven years time, we were able to uh, create everything to do the proper exit and, and move everything over. Um, so it could be either to a to a key person or somebody else or or a competitor, but sure. it's basically more of an inside transaction. Another one is family. Um, the fa- uh, the owner may just want to give it to the family. Then there's oh. in, in the smaller businesses. There's a concept that's called uh, uh, lowest defensible value because time is your friend. If you don't have time, it's not a good thing. But if you're looking at five years or longer, um, or maybe, yeah, probably five years or longer, you can do things in such a way that what do all the key people and the family have in common? Well, I think uh, they're they're related, right? The relationship. Well, yeah, but financially, what do they all have in common? They all need to make money. And they don't have the money. Yeah. Well, they don't have the money to buy the business, frankly. Uh-huh. That's that's the problem they have. And the way we there's ways of circumventing that problem, and it's called lowest defensible value. Mm. So what you're actually doing, what I've, I've done with the clients is begin pulling money off the table in some vehicles like non-qualified deferred compensation, uh, where it goes into the owner's pocket in special protected accounts, so that they don't have to sell it for the highest value. They could sell it for the lowest value, which also helps their uh, taxes going forward. Their estate taxes, because we know right now, uh, Biden is not Trump, you know? (laughs) So things are going to change. Taxes are going to take off. And it could very well be that the, you know, the $11.5 million lifetime exemption can go back to $3.5 I see. And that could affect an awful lot of people. So how do you do that planning? Uh, so it's it's not just a planning for the, it's planning for the exit really in all different financial structures. And that's why I cannot do it by myself. I have estate planning attorneys, I have business uh, tax attorneys, I have, I, have, uh, I have accountants that work with me and, it, and then we, figure, do we have to bring somebody else in? Is it going to be a broker or do we have to, is it going to be an, um, an M&A transaction? What, what are we looking at? So it's, it's not that it's one size fits all. It's who's the all, what's, what's, the, what's the business, what do they want, and what's the best way to get them there? Yes, I think on that note, I, I have shared in the chat area a very useful resource that Coach Irving has provided us. It's actually, uh, it's, there's a link in there and it will help you come up and evaluate, you know, your business exit planning and valuation. So there is a link in the chat, you, you know, feel free to to copy it down or, or, or click on it. And maybe when you have some time later on, you can, you know, go ahead and answer those questions. Uh, Irving, what's What's in that link and what is it that people have to do? The exit. I, I don't see it up there. Are you putting it up it's there, in, Sanjay? It's in the chat. It's, uh, I'm looking in the map. chat. Yeah, I can, I can, oh, there I it can is. see it. There it is. Okay. What sure. that'll do, it's a, uh, it'll take about 15 minutes or so. Okay. And uh, it'll look at your business based upon your answers to those questions at, at several different uh, yeah. vantage points. So first of all, it costs nothing to do it. And other than your 15 minutes, and then what? What I'm offering is a uh, uh, is a one-hour meeting after that to talk about particulars and tell you what all of this means. Uh, so again, there's there's no obligation for that. It's, it's something I enjoy doing and getting yeah. to know people. And actually, maybe my next book is going to be along the lines of. Uh, my experiences in working with different owners and planning. So it's, uh, it gives you a kind of an interesting overview of, of the business and maybe some things you haven't thought about before uh, the good and the not so good, but it's, uh, it's a way of just, uh, taking a look at things. And, uh, 
and then if uh, you anybody interested, there's a, a business valuation that I can do, which I drastically discount. So that's that's 199 bucks. It's used normally 499, but if anybody wants that and they want to do the exit map, then uh, we could uh, we could do both, or just the exit map is fine with me. So. I think this this is helpful, and this this will uh, get you really thinking about the business and looking at it maybe in ways you haven't thought about it before. So, so Arvind, you talked about what if the owner wants to sell but still wants to stay involved? You know, uh, like they don't want to like quit all together. What what are some ways they can do that? I mean, even though they have sold the business, but they are still in it, helping. The next owner out. I mean, well, yeah, you know, it's interesting that Ashok even mentioned that is that they they want him, they want him to stay, they want him to work there. So right. I, I'm sure that would be the uh, kind of the owner's discretion uh, to keep keep his hand in there if he wants to. But you know, it's uh, it's all what about are, what about money also? Like, can they keep getting paid by the business they have sold, even though they've sold it? Is there ways to do that? Yeah, it's it's all in the go about the negotiation. That's why you need clever attorneys and clever accountants. Okay. And the clever accountant will show you what's the best way for the buyer, what's the best way for the seller, what do the numbers look like. Uh, the clever attorney will be able to draft an agreement. So uh, one of the agreements that I love to draft is I I tell the attorney the kind of agreement we want because my I'm engaged by the owner, so I I want to protect the owner at all costs. So I will say, let's draft it. Even though we're going to sell it to a key person, let's have an let's have an exit door, and the exit door will basically say, up till the time of the actual transaction goes through, uh, I can change my mind and sell it to a third party. Right. And if I do that, you're going to get some kind of a reward because it's not just a stick. We want to have a carrot also. Uh, so it's how you structure the agreements and how the attorney does it. And I always look at what's the best way to protect the owner? Well, I, would, I just want to make sure that's the one that's hiring me. That's the one that's paying the bill. And how do I do that? And depending on how much time we have, the more time, the better. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really important that we have all the right people on board. And it, it may be even through some kind of a, uh, a special pension plan. So there's, there's different ways. I just want to get the money. I just want to make sure that the owner, the owner has as much money in his, his or her pocket as, as it possibly can, and we don't leave too much on the table. But yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I had the situation I have with the air conditioning company. Um, he, uh, he left, but he, he had a three-year consulting agreement. So he picked up money for three additional years. And some are longer, some are shorter. Some owners, some people buying it, I uh, think that the reason I'm buying it is because this this person who owned it before didn't really maximize the business. So what it makes it more valuable to them. Yeah, absolutely. So we we are recording uh, the the session today, the fireside chat and the roundtable. So we will post a link. Uh, to everybody who have attended, so you can review it later on. So I also added the link to Coach Irving's uh, book on Amazon, Family Business Secrets. Uh, apparently, it says there's only one copy left, so Irving, <laughs> people, people we have wanna, to have a fist fight. <laughs> people want to get some more copies, I would suggest get in touch with Irving directly. I have added his contacts to the chat as well. Uh, that's a great book, by the way, it's, it's, uh, and it's a quick read, but there are a lot of great insights in there. You know, and uh, uh, I still remember when Irving launched that book, and we had done a launch event back then. You know, a few. Yeah, we had a good party at the Indian restaurant. <laughs> yes, I remember that. So, uh, well, it's it's your uh, roundtable, folks. Go ahead and ask questions if you have for Irving. Uh, you know, uh, feel free to chime in. Uh, you know, unmute your mic and and just ask him whatever you would like to do. And as a quick update, our next fireside chat is a really good one. It's on February 11. Uh, February 11 at 4 p.m. It's with, uh, uh, you know, with Disney. And the, the content of that is how to do business with Disney and large companies. And we have an amazing, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, procurement and diversity 
and sourcing manager who has been at Disney for 25, 30 years. And she is going to be over, you know, uh, on the fireside chat. So yeah, it's on February 11 at 4 p.m. And I'll send everybody a link to join that later on as well. But go ahead, uh, Irving, uh, what are some additional thoughts? What are some exits that you've seen which have been amazing and 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 we are like, wow, that was pretty awesome. That business owner did awesome there. Yeah, well, it's it's always nice when you can go back and the way I know I'm successful is the people will still talk talk to me and love me after it's done. Yeah, because <laughs> they the the uh, the best is when both parties are really really happy, uh, where the uh, the person walked away, the owner walked away with the money they wanted. They're enjoying their retirement now. I have another couple who's actually moved to Tucson who had a great HR business and the people that bought them, that was actually part of a roll up. It was part of a, uh, a time when HR companies were really, really popular. And this was one of the first women owned companies and she built it for nothing to sell it for several million dollars. And this was about four years ago. So, it's nice to go back and, and, and revisit the people and see where they are. The other thing too, that's nice is that I keep creating and finding more tools that I can use to bring more value. Sure. So that's how I build my business. And uh, I, I'm not looking to have an empire. I'm just looking to enjoy and pe work with people I really like. And that's, uh, uh, that wasn't always that way, but I'm, I'm blessed to be in that position that I can do that. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so Irving, I mean, you, you're just amazing, you know, the amount of entrepreneurship you had in, in one career, I guess, for most people, that could be multiple <laughs> careers combined, you know, from your New York days to now doing what you do here in California for the last several decades now. And, and you've written books on it, it looks like another book is coming on valuation and exit planning, I'm, I'm seeing that happening soon. Uh, I mean, what, what is next for you? I mean, I know you love doing this. You love helping uh, business owners, you know, uh, scale up and and grow. I mean, uh, are you planning on launching an advisory kind of a service or what's what's the next for you? That that could be a possibility where I, w I would take the people I'm working with and, and put it together like a th some kind of a think tank. Think tank. Where, yeah, yeah we, we get together and we talk about what each... Uh, what each does and what each brings because it's just exit planning is a team sport if some one person if your accountant is the only person you're working with you could be missing a lot of opportunity if the attorney is the only person so they all have to be working for you it's like what i love doing is just putting the the pieces together getting the right people in place because um people have different personalities and different ways of doing things. And some of the people I work with rub people the wrong way. So if I could tell that pretty quickly, we could save a lot of time and energy. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna, gonna keep going and, and, and figure out what the next strategy is. Absolutely. I know some, some folks uh, joined a little later. If you have Questions for Arwing or would like to chime in a little bit about what you're doing in your business, this is your time. I see Pavan here, Anil, uh, Ramesh, uh, uh, Yo, Sanchez. Go ahead and if you want to uh, just chat briefly, uh, this is your time. Ashok. I got a quick question. So I think uh, Sanjay, you're doing a very good job for the whole, all of us together. Arwing is great and uh, a lot of insights, valuations. But it's like a two sides of the coin. We only have the head side, which is Irving. The tail side is that you need to bring the investor who can buy the small businesses. Otherwise, you know, after having an evaluations, how are we going to market our company to the investors, you know? So we, we have Anil here to share a little bit more on the investor. Anil, go ahead. I know you want to say something. <laughs> Hey, uh, thank you, Sanjay. Thanks for having us here. Sorry, I couldn't join earlier. I was stuck. Um, I'm part of uh, Thai SoCal, and we're I'm the executive director. Sanjay helps us with the marketing. Uh, he does great stuff. Whatever he does in marketing, I don't know what he does, but he <laughs> does excellent uh, stuff. So we have Thai SoCal Angels Fund. And we 
we invest in startups and uh, you know we have a monthly pitching event thai socal angels every every you can go to thaisocalangels.com and apply there and uh, we i mean for example a lot of startups uh, apply i mean this this month alone we have close to 100 startups i believe uh, so there's a lot of them apply and towards if you're not a startup if you're interested in small business just like arving uh, said we might we if you send us an email we could connect you with another uh, mna guy uh, who who might be interested in that industry absolutely absolutely i mean we have uh, like yesterday's event we had a show we have some charter members who have had exits you know multi million plus and and they're very well established so they're very well connected to the investment and uh, you know the vc community but go ahead anil yeah so you know go to if you if you are start up go to tysocalangels.com apply there and if you want to do mna some industry send us an email uh, you know and we can uh, connect you with uh, based on the industry we can connect you hey this guy runs a small business and or if you do you know any company willing to buy so there is a yeah. lot of uh, stuff you can do anil can you also drop in your contact in the chat for everybody yes right. will do will do and uh, i you know myself i run a uh, infrastructure it infrastructure company we provide 24/7 it help desk and a network operation center and a security operation center and uh, we are uh, just a it infrastructure support company and we are in we are oem agnostic so okay. it doesn't matter so you work with all all cloud and everybody out there yeah okay. anybody else would like to chime in who arrived uh, later pankaj pavan ramesh anyone Yeah. That's fine. Sure, I'll, I'll just I'll just I'll just say this here, Arvind. Can you provide some idea from the other side of the fence, not from a, if it's a small business? You're talking a lot from what I, what I heard. At the, I got here half in, in in the discussion is, if it's a small business, how do you actually look at it from um, an investment in, investor's perspective, and see how do you value the business? How would you value the business from that perspective? and what you would look out for you can provide some ideas on that uh, are we go ahead the valuation that i'm talking about which is very 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 inexpensive it won't hold up in court but it'll give you a good starting point we'll we'll give you some ballpark numbers of what that business is worth and analyze the financials and 20 different ways it comes out with almost a 30 page report and uh with that you can you can go and begin to negotiate from a buyer's perspective if you're looking to buy businesses uh it'll i think it'll it's worth it just to take a look at it and and see if it's something that uh us what the business is because if you're going to you know if you're going to expend a lot of money to buy a business and put yourself on the line you, you really need to know what you're getting so but you do need the financials from the business in order to do even a simple valuation which and i have all of that down i have a simple form to complete and if the uh, person is serious and you're serious then uh it's worth it just to do a uh, this this simple valuation yeah so i think uh, i'm going to if you haven't looked at the information in the chat i'm going to add his coach arving's contact one more time uh, you know his email and his phone number so please feel free to reach out to him directly uh, and as he already said you know he's going to help everybody who has attended here both with the uh, you know uh, the exit map plan, yeah exit map planning valuation all of the above and, and also give us some extra time so you know i, I really appreciate that yeah yeah just email me i'd be happy to do it absolutely so uh, any other questions folks go ahead 
I think if we don't have any more, Arvind, would you like to share a couple of words of insights before our next roundtable in February? Yeah, yeah well, I, I enjoyed it, and I've seen your emails, and uh, and Il, and uh, I definitely, now that I know who you are, I'll I'll answer them. All right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I I think it's a great great group, and you know we can either look at these are the worst of times or these are the best of times. So. It's to me, it's a rah-rah message. We're here, right? So we got to make the, the best of it. And every day is a new, exciting beginning and we can make it a great day or we can cry. You know, yesterday was a bad day in the market. Today it bounced back. So yeah. who's to say, you know, we uh, build our dreams one piece at a time. And uh, um, have, I've known Sanjay, I can't, how many years, Sanjay? Is it over 20 14, years? 14 years, but That's it, all, feels like, it feels like 20. Thank it feels like 20. <laughs> Actually, I just heard from a friend of mine today because I do a little work in the research and the de development tax credit area. And he just moved to uh, Nashville, Tennessee, oh, not so recently. And it just, I, I, I have so many different email programs that I always say, my, one of my favorite expressions is that the debtor always come back to life. I heard from, <laughs> I heard from, a, from a woman whose husband's a veterinarian that at, at that time I was I was doing some land deals out in <laughs> Lancaster and Palmdale and they made a lot of money in the land and now they want to know what to do with it. So I just bought bought another service and all of a sudden you to, you're talking to people you, you totally forgot about. So I think for all of us, we touch a lot of lives and we don't realize how many we touch yeah. and there's nothing better than a good CRM. So say that's that, that's the takeaway. Make sure we invest in a good CRM in 2021. I think whatever that you like, I think what Irving, I, what I love about Coach Irving is, it, besides the fact is is so great to talk to and always inspiring is he he always connects. You know he he's always out there helping you. You know if if you need help, you know he's there. You know, if you're feeling down, you know, I just gave him a shout. I said, hey, coach, what's happening? <laughs> and, and actually, my father and, and him were connected really well, as oh, well yeah. a few years ago. So one of them always asked me, hey, how's your dad doing? And, you know, it's always good to, yeah. to hear. He's a sweet him. guy. Yeah, yeah. So, so coach, uh, thank you. I, I, I personally, I, I really enjoyed uh, today's session. I learned a lot, uh, you know, about what, what are the different, things you know that a business owner ought to be thinking a ceo ought to be thinking you know when it comes to valuing their business how to increase their valuation there's so many things to think about uh, but ultimately it boils down to doing good business and and, and you know and and creating uh, uh, the scale you know if you want to really grow the value uh, so thank you again um, i guess uh, coach you have somebody else who wants to come and say hi <laughs> No, we say goodbye from London. <laughs> goodbye from London. <laughs> San Clemente, London. Thank you all, uh, folks. Uh, that's a great background, by the way. Love it. Uh, and we'll see you all at our next roundtable on February 11th uh, at 4 p.m. How to do business with Disney and large companies. It's going to be really good. And again, I appreciate everybody joining in. I have also added my contacts in the chat. Uh, I think at the end of the meeting, Zoom allows you to save the chat so you can look at all the chat in there. And uh, uh, yeah, let's let's connect, let's collaborate, and let's let's do some awesome business in 2021. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you all. Cheers. <laughs>